Oh, Mr. Hawkins, I, I, excuse me, but it looks like you're getting ready to have dinner or something. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, that is going to happen oh. at some point mm -hmm. in time, uh, like within the next hour or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting that you showed up right now because oh. I have a book, a cookbook. You have a cookbook? I have a cookbook. Oh my. That uh, I'd like to share with you and Please. those of you know, others who might be interested. Mm -hmm. I'm calling it the, the Little Urban Gourmet Cookbook. Oh. The Little Urban Gourmet. Of course, we know what urban is cold for. Ah, I uh, see it. Very but, uh, nice. And Rather incidentally, uh, the photos that I'm showing you were all taken by an excellent photographer named Zola Selena Hawkins. Thank you. So, here's the back. Uh -huh. Let me read you what I said, starting at the back. Okay. The little gourmet. I left out urban on the back. Wow. <laughs> no. Proofreading. The little urban gourmet cookbook focuses on food that is good for you. The best kind of food and exercise create a harmonious lifestyle. It's not about a lot of running and kicking, but about being sensible and consistent. Mm -hmm. There are foods we must forget about in order to have a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They fall into many categories, but basically, they are foods that may taste good, but will inevitably make you unhealthy. Let's eat right. Let's be right. Uh, what gave me the idea for this book was the thought of, uh, I was in a 99 cent store and buying little 99 cent items and in uh, the 99 cent store that I go to, they have food. They have vegetables, they have uh, canned goods and so forth. And most of everything in the store costs a dollar or less, or a dollar slightly more. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about uh, people who don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. who are forced to go shopping at the 99 cent store for food. Mm -hmm. that, that sort of piqued the idea of coming up with a cookbook that would feature foods that cost very little, but at the same time, could be nutritious. Right. I mean, a good can of sardines is a good can of sardines. As a matter of fact, a strange thing happened. I saw some uh, items. One, one of them was uh, herring in, in sauce, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it cost 99 cents at the 99 cent store. At the same time, it cost two dollars and something. At, Trader Joe's, one of our favorite stores. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. all it indicated to me is that you would have to search, you know, uh, pick uh, and choose very wisely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would probably have a uh, successful outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the recipes are a jumble of things mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what I'll do is read you some of them All right. as an indication of what it is I'm talking about. Uh, here's one. Yeah, well, here. Uh, I'll start with this one. Mm -hmm. This is uh, oh, tofu, okay. yes. lentils, and beef. My tofu, goodness. lentils, and beef. All right. Okay. Uh, something for the vegetarian and something for the meat eater. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Uh, lentils have a great uh, deal of rough agenda. For those who are not hip to tofu, mm -hmm. uh, check it out at your nearest Asian store. They very likely will have it. Uh, but it's soybean cake. Do you it like can be the, fried. Do you get the soft or the hot or the firm? Uh, I use the firm. Okay. Some people like uh, the soft. Mm -hmm. And then they have it in between. Okay. Uh, the the beef in this case can be a very cheap cut of beef, mm -hmm. or you could actually use sardines. Oh, okay. And uh, the lentils, I think, in the ninety nine cent store cost 
99 cents. All right. Your tofu costs a dollar 35 cents oh. in most Asian stores. Very rarely more than a dollar 50 cents. And of course, if you use sardines rather than uh, beef, you can get beef, uh, like uh, leftover beef uh, strips, mm -hmm. if you choose to use beef. But oh. frankly, I think the recipe is better with uh, with uh, sardines. Okay, and you said Asian stores, so you also go you shop at Asian stores as well. Uh. I, I'm indicating in a very understated way that shopping at Asian stores for your vegetables and so forth mm. is a is a good thing to do because mm. the the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Japanese, the Koreans really like to have fresh vegetables, uh -huh. and in some other stores that are way down on the distribution list, mm. you might not have anything fresh. Uh -huh. so, Okay. Uh, a word to the wise is to be considered. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'll start off reading. Please. How about that? Please. This is a picture of Zola and Odie. I'm Odie. She's Zola. Uh, he pointed at your picture, but okay, I see it there. You see it? Uh huh. And, and we're in uh, a little uh, restaurant in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I believe the year was 2013 or 2015. 2014, probably. 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, mm -hmm. sitting there having a cold club beer, yes. which is what you do in that place, is a wonderful way to rehydrate yourself. Definitely. Okay. Uh, the little go urban gourmet cookbook will be fooling a lot of people who automatically figure out figure that if the word little urban is attached to it, it must be cheap. As most of us who live in the urban areas of America already know, life in the urban areas is quite expensive. Medicine, general health care, housing, red line, insurance rates, who, whatever, costs more comparatively than it does in other residential areas. It is expensive to live in such areas. Now then, having preached that sermon. The Little Urban Gourmet Cookbook will require some relatively expensive expenditures initially, mainly in the spice area. Spices for many of us consist of basically two, salt and pepper, plus the various hot sauces that many of us like too much, like me. The serious Urban Gourmet should stock up on the following spices. Turmeric, curry powder, dill, margarine, oregano, bay leaves, anise, crushed parsley, garlic, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> cumin seed, crushed onion, basil, and thyme. Uh, these are <coughs> things that will enhance whatever you do with your food. And if you learn how to use them properly, they will greatly enhance what you like. <clears throat> All of these spices, except for turmeric and curry powder, can be purchased in a spice rack that has 40 different spices, <clears throat> some not mentioned here. The spice rack is fairly expensive, and you won't be able to find it, to find it in your local market but the effort and expense to obtain it will pay off with more flavorful foods. The little urban gourmet cookbook cuisine is broad ranging and adventurous. It must be given the fact that good food doesn't have boundaries. Uh, I'm starting off with a simple thing. Eggplant. The eggplant is uh, very easy to prepare. You only need to slice it and fry it, if you like, in olive oil, which you should use rather than lard or butter or any of the other kinds of greases that are just that grease. Eggplant. Mm. Uh, uh, let me see. 
How about sardines, noodles, and greens? Oh. I know it seems that I'm kind of big on sardines, but yes. there are many different kinds of sardines. For example, <clears throat> there's a uh, Vietnamese store on Anaheim near Long Beach Boulevard that has uh, a great variety of sardines. They have one brand, they come from Morocco, that is really great. Mm. In addition to that, if you are anywhere near uh, Cerritos, there's a Filipino market there called Seafood City that sells uh, fresh uh, sardines, uncanned. And if you thought that sardines <coughs> were only about this long, you should go to this market, to their, to their seafood section, and find out that sardines could be this long. And, you know, they're great. A, a little bit more about the book. It almost started off as a joke. Like I said, I, wanted, I was trying to, I was thinking of a way to say something about how someone with a limited amount of money could uh, make great dishes by shopping at the 99 cent store and uh, buying things there that would be nutritious and delicious. Uh, I'm going to read something about what I said, just to let you know if there's a combination of things happening. In these, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> I'm drinking lemonade in order to kill this frog in my throat. Plenty colored lemonade. Mm. There's a lemon in it somewhere. <laughs> um, okay. In these anxiety-ridden times with millions believing that we have finally reached the end, it is more important than ever before that we learn how to eat well. Eating well, rather than anxiously eating too much or too little, will be one of the basic keys used to enable us to survive the wars of terrorism, of nerves, of bioterror, or ordinary life in the 21st century and the one that may come, that may come. Food will be the panacea that creates the comfort zone necessary for the mind to remain stable. Let me repeat that. Food will be the panacea that creates the comfort zone necessary for the mind to remain stable. No, food is not going to replace love, art, and calmness in the face of tremendous pressures, but it will be the panacea, the catalyst that creates the comfort zone of stability. People who have never thought of getting together for family dinners, picnics, holidays, quiet evenings for two, will begin to discover the importance of that kind of bonding. Those of us who have the lower end of the economic stick will find this comfort zone more than... Those of us who have the lower end of the economic stick will need this comfort zone more than many others. The Little Urban Gourmet Cookbook is attempting to foreshadow this need with interesting, tasteful, perhaps exotic recipes that will make the world a cozier place to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, I have the 98 cents store yeah. shopper. I've talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. But here's one person who knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. There probably won't be any fresh vegetables in your local 98, 99 cent stores, but there will be a number of canned food items that you can make decent meals out of. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the seafood section, which is apt to consist of only one or two items. The California Girl sardines and tomato sauce offer a starting point. Unless you really like that too sweet, tomato sauce, rinse it off in warm water. Place the third-rate sardines in a small skillet or your trusty wok. If you have one, if you haven't, don't have one, you should buy one. Drizzle a bit of olive oil over these rinsed off sardines. Shake a couple of shakes of dill weed on the sardines, if it's handy, and arrange them arrange them on bed to steam rice. Suddenly, the 
third rate sardines mm. have been transformed into a first rate dinner. Mm. This is for the carnivores. There's often corned beef for sale in the 99 cent store. Buy a couple of tins and experiment a bit. Corned beef and cottage fried potatoes is a natural matchup, spiced up with a bit of garlic and curry powder. More on garlic in a bit. Here's one that might be of interest to you. Is Frank's onions and greens. <laughs> That'd be nice. They, they, the Franks probably are not kosher. Hmm. The onions are what onions are. Mm -hmm. And the greens can be whatever kind of green you can find that is fresh. But you can also uh, shop around for kosher. That is reasonable. Uh, mm -hmm. Kale. Yes. Uh, collards, spinach. Mm -hmm. uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. Here's a uh, interesting breakfast. Eggs, onions, sausage, and tomatoes. Once again, all one, two, three, four of these items come out of the 99 cent store. Ah, all right. They've been attractively arranged, of course, because food should look good, because when it looks good, it tastes better. Amen. <laughs> uh, I, hmm, I meant to say, back to garlic, and I'm coming back to garlic. Matter of fact, I made a note. Back to garlic, hurry, dot, <laughs> dot, dot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Use garlic whenever and however you can. Try this, fry a few whole parts of this great stuff and eat it as a snack. Ignore those who would like for you to feel that you're committing some kind of sin because you have a little garlic on your breath. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the stench of death is preferable to some rather than the aroma of life. Garlic needn't be consumed in noticeable chunks. It can be delicately shaved into whatever you're cooking. It doesn't seem to have an enemy anywhere in the world of cuisine. Of course, if you're preparing something delicate like mashed potatoes and lentil soup, you wouldn't want to have the garlic overpower the taste of the lentils. A lot of people ignore lentils because they didn't grow up eating them. No problem, start now. <laughs> a one pound pack of lentil, plenty of water in the proper pot, salt, pepper, cumin seed, and or curry powder. A bit of turmeric will add a nice flavor to the lentils. In addition to that, uh, turmeric is yellow and it gives things sort of a nice saffron color. Mm -hmm. uh, try stirring it around in rice. It makes the rice look different and more exotic. In addition to that, it has a uh, anti, <laughs> it has a biotic, antibiotic inflammatory connection mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. The Indians use it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> a bit of turmeric can add a nice flavor to the lentil. Simmer boil until they are soupy. You'll know they're done by tasting a lentil or two. Mm -hmm. yes. To determine if they're chewy, but not mushy. Yes. You don't want to have mushy lentils. You want to have lentils al dente. Mm -hmm. It's really a sign of some kind of perverted thinking to even want to put garlic on the bad boys list. I really like the way the Koreans and Southern Italians they say it. Basically, kiss my garlic. Well, in fact, Willie L Nelson last night said, "Bad breath is better than no breath." And so, okay, garlic breath, that? Willie Nelson, he oh, said, oh. bad breath is better than no breath. Well, if anybody knows, <laughs> Willie does know. Okay. Uh, mm. Garlic thinly sliced and an onion thick, thickly sliced will give you all of the essential fiber and stuff needed to fight off constipation and possibly hard clogging cholesterol. Uh, since I became a, chin, a kimchi lover, go to your local Korean market, surprise them. Okay, it's going to cost more than a dollar. <clears throat> this is where I went off the rails a little bit because I discovered there's some things that I favor and there's some things that uh, are really great that do cost more than a dollar. But I think what one can do, if one has to do it, 
is skimp on some things that cost a dollar and add those uh, savings into a, a bigger chunk of money and then splurge it on kimchi. And here's why I'm saying that. Since I became a kimchi lover, go to your local Korean market, surprise them, and buy a jar of kimchi. It's fermented cabbage, mostly, but a bunch of other vegetables also get the kimchi treatment. If you have a serious interest in your family's good health, don't hesitate to patronize the Asian markets. You'll find some surprisingly good food items and more economical prices. Uh, I've spoken about tofu. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another one. This is garbanzo beans, noodles, and grains. Huh. Mm, garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. noodles, noodles, and grains. And beans. Uh -huh. I, I kind of got stuck on the rhyme of it before I actually wrote the recipe. I was thinking <laughs> to myself, garbanzo beans, noodles, and greens. Garbanzo beans, noodles, and greens. Gab yeah, oh. got, got the general picture. Okay. Everybody knows how to cook uh, beans, <clears throat> I assume. Uh, you cook them until they're done, but not overdone and not underdone. And uh, for one person or two, you may not need a whole package of beans because they do swell up. Mm. Point. <clears throat> if you do overcook food, if you make the mistake, for example, of uh, making a pot of spaghetti, instead of a, a, a spaghetti for two, and you have uh, whatever you have in it, don't throw it away. Put it in a container and take it out and drive down the street till you see some person who is on the street. Because as you know, these days, uh, homeless people are a percentage of every population in every major city. And since this is the little urban gourmet cookbook, then uh, you may not be able to give people a place to stay or money even, but you can give them your, your, your you, can, you can share your food with them. I don't want to say leftovers, but if you can't eat it, remember there's someone else who can. Okay, having preached that little sermon, ah, what do we got here? Uh, this is a hmm, sweet potatoes and fish. Hmm. Somebody might look at that and think, oh, he's talking West Indian man. <laughs> well, I may be, I don't know. Because I know I do like my sweet potatoes and I do like my rice and I like my fish. Uh -huh. You can also use uh, sardines right. instead of fish. If you're not uh, capable or not able to buy the, the fish on that particular day, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great southern favorite. Huh. Our, our boy Romney trying to, you know, appeal to the down home folks during his uh, political campaign, talked about the, the lovely qualities of cheesy grits, and all the people. And the audience just sort of laughed indulgently because here's this northern boy who is trying to get into cheese grits. Cheesy means something else altogether. Uh, don't overcook your grits. A lot of times people who boil things don't realize that you can overboil. You can overboil water. You can boil it so hard and so cold-bloodedly that it'll wind up disappearing. <laughs> and become steam. Mm -hmm. So don't find yourself guilty of it. Uh, I'd like to read what it felt like to be a poor boy growing up in Chicago and what it was like to not always have a lot of food. It was spring and we lived across the railroad tracks from the lake. We could walk a few blocks south and cross over the bridge that was placed there for people to get up to the lake. Or we could go over this wall and go across 15 or 20 icy 
tracks, which meant that from time to time somebody might get killed. Uh, it's a funny feeling to find yourself in the middle of the the uh, the cross, in the middle of the the train tracks running back and forth, and here comes a train from way out there, way over there, and it's hard to figure out which track is on when it's far away. Uh, I've had them pass right in front of my nose, and uh, it's a weird feeling. It's like you've been killed. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to focus on that. We could walk a few blocks south and cross over the bridge that was placed there for people to get to the lake. The infamous black cop, Two Gun Pete. Yes. Known by his real name as Sylvester Washington, mm -hmm. who had shot 11 black people to death and terrorized hundreds of others, had a tavern on the west side of the bridge, or we could skip across to the train tracks, running the risk of being electrocuted or run over by the IC. I skipped across the tracks feeling lightheaded and extremely nonchalant. It was my third full day without a meal, uh, and for some reason I was becoming less hungry with each passing hour. Springtime in Chicago was a glorious time to be alive, even if you lived in the ghetto or in urban areas, hungry or not. Buds were opening, the new grass was gorgeously green, carpets of new dandelions sprouted in shimmering waves. If I had known what I had found out later on, I could have eaten those dandelions. <laughs> Buds were opening, the new grass was gorgeously green, carpets of new dandelions sprouted in shimmering waves. Baby birds were chirping and had bloom trees. The sky was cloudless and the lake was an ebullient aquamarine. Hmm. I felt as though I were in some kind of heaven. Nowadays, having learned a few more words, I would say that I was simply delirious. I floated down onto the huge rocks bordering the lakefront, laced my hands behind my head and stared up at the bluest sky I'd ever seen. Just three days without food had reduced me to being a sense fruit. I could hear my heartbeat. I could feel the reaction of my skin was making to the warm breezes that flushed over me. I could distinguish colors from odors from way off. The charcoal aroma of barbecue was almost nauseating. Mm. It took an hour of this kind of delirium for me to come to the conclusion that I was deliriously happy. <laughs> I stood up and smiled at the lake, having no one to share my delirium with. I started walking on the rocks, heading north. Where was I going? I, don't know. I didn't know. I didn't care. I just felt the urge to be in motion. I thought back to that day many times, tried to understand what went through me. Was I feeling the way I felt because I was starving or because I didn't feel threatened by the starvation? I still don't have a fix on the conclusion. I strolled on the rocks from 39th Street to the point Hyde Park, 57th Street. For those in you in Chicago, my family, <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about. I strolled on the rock, ignoring the people chewing on their midday sandwiches, the lovers sharing slices of pizza, the families gobbling up their fried chicken and mayonnaise-laden potato salads. I felt a strange sense of love for myself. Maybe it was because I could feel so much more of myself than I'd ever felt before. I could feel the washboard ladder of my ribs. My stomach felt like it was nipping my spine. My heart beats and settle into a mellow while I'm cold. My steps were light, springy, dance-like. My senses keen. Yes, it was a strange kind of love. I'm sure if the lake surface had been smooth enough for me to see my reflection, I would have pulled a narcissus and never been seen again. And then it was the next day, and the check came. I don't have the foggiest notion how I retraced my late front steps home, the obstacles I had to overcome. Angels may have tilted me onto their feathery shoulders, or a silently screamed ambulance may have done the job. I can't recall the details of my return to our food bear pad, but I do recall the dreams I had that night. The first three were like interlocked short stories, lean, clear, devoid of hallucinogenic calories. I was in an ethereal swing, 
mounted on a sky branch, swinging back and forth toward the horizon. A shoe, a shoe, a shoe. Ah, baked potatoes, onions, tomatoes, and lamb. Okay, okay. Once again, I sort of skidded off the rails there with the lamb. Lamb is not the cheapest meat to buy, but I think it can be one of the tastiest and is very lean. Once again, it might mean, well, it might mean, you know, uh, taking a little stash and letting it pile up a little bit so that when you go shopping, you'll be able to buy yourself uh, a piece of lamb to go with this. Here's one that's fairly cheap. It's a... Uh, well, I don't know what this is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, these are spring rolls with banana bread. Uh. And I mention banana bread because from time to time, if you act right and you're nice enough, people will sometimes give you things. Like, for example, uh, Lily Hood gave us banana bread. And she's an excellent friend. And we, uh, we put a little yogurt butter on it and put it in the oven and, and had uh, a wonderful banana bread dessert. Mm -hmm. uh, the spring rolls, well, you'll have to find yourself somebody who likes, who makes spring rolls and say, could you give me some spring rolls, please? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think Orlando does. Could you right? give us some Yeah, she makes spring. In addition to that, if you want yourself a nice cold club beer, Amen. there's a clear photograph that I'm going to get to. But if you want a nice cold uh, club beer, you would have to go to Ghana to get it. And that costs a little bit more than 99 cents. But it's delicious. The only beer that ah. I like. <laughs> there you go. It's a little bit better than 7 Up. Mm. Okay, but it's definitely good. These are corn cakes. Ah, and yes. all you have to do, if you can buy some <clears throat> cornmeal from your 98 cent store, 99 cent store, and just stir it with milk if possible, or you can use water. And uh, we used to eat these all the time. I used to carry pieces of it around in my pocket for snacks. Mm -hmm. You. Uh, Fried like you would, you know, pancakes, and. Uh, I see you put an egg in it sometimes. If you got an egg, I didn't want to mention. Oh, there's a 99 cent store. Usually, will sell eggs, but I, I don't know. I don't. I don't trust the eggs very much because, you know, that, that egg can. We buy our eggs from Trader Joe's. Die on you. Uh, <laughs> you'll be full of salmonella and uh, all that stuff. Stuff. Okay. Here's another one that. Uh, mm is good from the 99 cents. So this is tuna, tomatoes, and lime. Hmm. Oh, okay. Tuna in the can mm -hmm. at the 99 cent store can be livened up mm -hmm. by sprinkling lime juice on it. Oh. And I found in all 99 cent stores, they usually have lime. They have the little small ones mm -hmm. that are not very juicy, but they serve the purpose. Very nice. And you squeeze it on the lime and mm -hmm. uh, by a tomato that goes with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to bring this to an end by suggesting that uh, all the... Uh, oh, here's a dessert. This is watermelon, melon, grape, and blueberries. The photo is by Zola Selena. <laughs> and... Okay. It gives you a variety of tastes. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody likes watermelon. And you can put a little bit more lemon and, and melon on the plate than what I put for myself. Okay. Yes. You see? Yes. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you would suggest that people check out their neighborhood and find out the reasonable markets or stores in their neighborhood or adjoining <clears throat> neighborhoods. You can, do, you can do one better than that. Mm -hmm. You can check out your neighborhood. I'm not suggesting that anybody <clears throat> bug anybody about this. Mm -hmm. But 
you can check out your neighborhood and find out what your neighbors are growing on their back on the in the trees in their backyard that they might be throwing away. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend next door, for example, uh, has grapefruit on her trees mm -hmm. on her tree in the backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, some in California, here we are in Long Beach, and people have lemon trees, and there's one down the alley here. This uh, mm. is it lemon or lime? It's a lime, lime tree. Lime tree. The lime just drop off the tree mm -hmm. and fall in the alley, and people mm -hmm. smash them up. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, in some kind of fit of civic urgency, I actually wrote a letter to the to the city, to the mayor's office, suggesting that. Uh, people who need food could be allowed, should be allowed to uh, pick uh, food off of trees and with the owner's permission, mm -hmm. uh, or that they might have food banks that did nothing but give away fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, in California, it seems that citrus is the big thing. You won't find very many apple trees. Mm -hmm. But who knows, you might find a, a a stray grape tree somewhere, and I'm sorry, a grape uh, arbor or vineyard yes. that no one's using. Uh huh. <laughs> Make yourself a little lemonade. Not likely, but okay. <laughs> Just a notion. Yes, here's a <laughs> here's a uh, clearer photo of Oh, Club beer Club in West beer. Africa. Yes, indeed. As you see, it's cold. At the Country Kitchen, the restaurant. The restaurant was called the Country Kitchen. Lovely place. And uh, we're going to go back there very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to end this with just a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Put it this way. Mm -hmm. This is the epilogue of this book. Gotcha. So what has happened since I started this irreverent plea for peaceful eating? We went to war. The date, 9-11, means that the world has become a bomb, waiting to be blown up by circumstances so far-fetched the ordinary mind goes blank trying to think about it. I've been honestly trying to distinguish the Shiites from the Sunnis, the Christians from the Jews, the Buddhists from the Hindus, this so-called deity from that so-called deity, but that doesn't matter, I'm in it, whether I want to be or not. These are bad tastes in your mouth. Why did those people have to crash those planes into those buildings and wreck the whole world? The multi-socio-psycho-spiritual explanation that will surface, half surface, will do nothing more than give us recipes for mental problems that will gag us. The virus is slowly spreading in the United States. No one feels at ease anymore, not even the white people. For religious reasons, they say, we will carry, a, carry on a jihad against you. So sad. So sad. Just when the technological advancements on this earth were beginning to give more and more people a better quality of life, the war against terrorism is called, and the terrorists give us their reasons for being who they are, and more and more people are killed. Sadly, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is a microscopic look at how the world is shaping up. It'll be 10 or 12 more in Afghanistan, a few in the Philippines, some in Indonesia, Pakistan and the rest of the stands, and eventually, finally, every nation in the world will have some sort of murderous tiff going on with his neighbor. That will be the world. That will be the way the world goes, with loud bangs and lots of whimpers. The whole thing might have been avoided if they had shared a good meal together. I see. <laughs> and with that. Hot pepper. The hot pepper <laughs> fell over. <laughs> Stuff must be hotter than I thought it would. In any case, a uh, good meal. You can purchase uh, within Author House. Well, Author House on Amazon. Amazon.com. Yes, Barnes or Noble. Barnes and Noble. Or your local bookstore. You or go in bookstore. and say, "I would like 
to purchase a copy of a Little Urban Gourmet Cookbook by Odie Hawkins. And your website, of course, is odiehawkins.com. All I can say to you is bon appetit. Bon appetit. Hey, when are you guys coming? <laughs>